morning, friends. It is good to have you with us. It is good, and we are grateful that you would share with us this time. Our prayer always is that you would be blessed, met at a point of need in your own life. And I would ask that as you begin this time of worship, that you would set aside whatever it is that is on your heart and mind, whatever it is that might be in the way, wherever you were last night or whatever you said to someone you love. Set it aside. Know that forgiveness happens here. Know that love is found here. And know that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is new and fresh each morning. Let us worship the Lord, our God.
without taking advantage of this beautiful weather and getting outside and going on walks or scooter rides or rollerblade rides or bike rides. I know, I just got back from a walk and I had such a great time because so many people have decorated for Halloween. I couldn't stop looking at all the decorations. There are people who have the most adorable decorations. There was this really cute owl sitting in a tree. And then there's people who have whole graveyards in their yard kind of scary. And then the guy across the street has this giant scary guy with a big black cape and a white mask. Every time I walk the dogs by that house, I get a little nervous when it moves on me. As I was walking around appreciating all the decorations, I thought, hmm, here I am in front of Mara Church and we don't have any Halloween decorations. Maybe we should. What would a church have for Halloween decorations? Well, I thought about it. We wouldn't want anything too scary because we don't want people to think churches are scary or that we're scary people. And we don't want anything too silly or funny. And we certainly don't want to be mean to anybody. So I started thinking about it and I thought, I know the perfect thing, pumpkins. Pumpkins are, first of all, my favorite color. They're the beautiful bright orange. And second of all, pumpkins are beautiful decorations right from nature. They're not made out of plastic or requiring to be plugged in anywhere. And so they'll remind people that we care about God's creation. We care about taking care of the environment and making good choices. So I thought pumpkins are a perfect Halloween decoration for our church, for churches in general. But pumpkins themselves can be a little boring, although they're beautiful colored, especially at night. So that's why people carve them into jack-o'-lanterns, put lights in them so they glow. I thought that would be cool. Let's make some jack-o'-lanterns for Mara Church. So what should the jack-o'-lantern be? Again, we don't want anything too scary. We don't want anything that's mean. We don't want anything that's kind of you know, too funny or silly. Again, we want people to know who we are. So as I started to think about that, I thought about the story that Pastor Janice had me think about for this week. And in that story, Jesus was asked a similar question. Not what Halloween decorations he should have, but what's the most important thing for people to think about? And I thought about that story and I knew exactly then what needed to be on our jack-o'-lantern. Jesus was asked by someone, if we have to think of all the rules and if we have to think of all the stories and all the things that we're supposed to do, what is the most important thing? And Jesus, it didn't take him a minute to come up with the answer. Do you know what it is? Well, guess what? I've already made a jack-o'-lantern with the word. Here we go. Ready to see my jack-o'-lantern? Love. When Jesus was asked, what's the most important thing that we can do? Jesus said, love. Love God and love each other with everything that you are and everything that you have. With your whole body, your whole mind, your whole heart, your spirit. Use everything that God has given you to share love and do that, especially for people so that they know how love feels. Pretty good, huh? So our church is going to be glowing this week with the word love. I hope that you'll come by and see it. Amen. Hi, here's our announcements for today. Well, if you're watching this on Sunday before 1130, you can still join us for our Sierra Leone Saunter. We'll be walking and seeking sponsorships to raise funds to continue the education, youth education work that we continue to support in Sierra Leone. If you'd like to just continue to make that support donation, you can do that via the website as well. Our MIF group meets this afternoon between 4 and 5.30. We're going to be carving pumpkins for some young students in our community. And our confirmation class will um, have their first meeting with parents and students following MIF at 5.45. Both of those are outside on the Baker Street lawn. 
Uh, the church council meets this week virtually on Wednesday the 28th. If you'd like to join in, then the Zoom links are available on the website and via the e-blast as well. New small groups for Advent will be starting in November, so take a look at those offerings when you see them and think about which ones work for you and your family so that you can be a part of a small group and make new connections or just connect again with friends from Mara that you haven't seen for a while. Next week, November 1st, we will start our celebration of All Saints Sunday. We are so grateful for the opportunity to remember and celebrate the lives of the saints in our church and in our community who have died this past year. And we invite everyone to send us pictures of their loved ones, friends and family that they want to remember as part of our All Saints service as well. Send the picture and name and connection to you, uh, to Wendy in our at our office and we'll include that in our virtual worship as well as our in-person worship. Also next Sunday will be the first time that we celebrate uh, worship in our sanctuary this season. We'll be indoors in the sanctuary. Check the e-blast for information about how we're going to be doing that safely to keep everybody healthy. And there's a covenant so that you can enter into a partnership with all of us about our health and safety practices. Of course, we're going to continue our weekly online uh, worship services and our monthly uh, contemplative services. And we are so grateful that we have those and we can send them to friends and family. I hope you do that. Send the link so they can be a part of our worship as well. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for your continued support of Morrow Church. The best way to support us financially is online, if you can do it that way, making your gifts uh, via the website or eblast. But in any way that you support Morrow, we give thanks for you, for all that you do, for holding us in your prayers, for being with us in all the ways that you are and supporting us financially as we continue the ministry of the church. Those are our announcements for the day. Hi friends, it's good to be with you always. Uh, we are excited and uh, prayerful that as we begin to return to our sanctuary for worship, uh, that we will be safe. We will pray week and in and week out. And uh, this morning, we wanted to just give you a sense of what that's going to look like and how that's going to happen. We've been blessed outside for worship with traffic going by, giving us a thumbs up with 40 people, sometimes more in attendance, and hearing the music echo from our space. And so this morning, we're going to talk a little bit as the weather gets cold about our moving inside on November 1st, which is All Saints Sunday and Holy Communion. All Saints Day is a good day that we would gather to remember people we have lost this year, knowing that the weight of that is heavier than we can capture. So we will ring the bell and be in silence and we will be together. Uh, this morning, we want in this video to show you a little bit about what that's going to look like. Uh, the ushers will be at the door uh, taking temperatures and asking those questions that you may have already answered when you've gone to the doctor. There's also a covenant, and you would have received that in your e-blast uh, announcing the opening on November 1st. The covenant is attached. We also have printed copies, and uh, we would ask for you to sign that. In that covenant, you commit to screening when you get here on Sunday morning, to wearing your mask, to keeping social distancing, and to quarantining. If you've been traveling, uh, particularly out of state on the advisory list, so we'll be grateful. But we do want signed covenants from everyone who plans to be in and around our building over the course of the next few weeks and even months. Covenants, because this commitment that we make to God is a two-way street. God is faithful, and so are we. We are faithful to the church, and the churchful is faithful to us. And so, uh, we line up with six feet of separation and be seated six feet apart. Families can sit together, of course. If you live together, you can sit together. And Dr. Holland, 
will bless us with the music that he makes. There will be no congregational singing. Yes, for us, United Methodists, no congregational singing. However, the music will still transport us and we will sing together again. We will know that the passages from the return of the exile will come alive. And we know here at Morrow Church that we do the work of sharing the good news, the e-blast, the uh, videos. Share those. Share the good news. And so we also would ask you to forward the e-blasts, any information that you get in your inbox or you find that might be of interest to a friend or a neighbor, invite folks to be with us one way or the other as we live out the gospel as we understand it. And that is to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Because Jesus says when he preaches his very first sermon, that we go out to set at liberty all those who are oppressed and bring recovery of sight to the blind. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus says. And so, I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to hearing from you. And I look forward to uh, keeping us all safe wherever we are. We worship the Lord our God. Psalm 90, verses 1 through 6, and verses 13 to 17. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Turn, O Lord. How long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. chapter 22 verses 34 to 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus has been called the embodiment of love. The church has been called a school of love, a place where we are both students and teachers for each other. As good United Methodists on Reformation Sunday morning, we hear the words of Jesus, Thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love. Thou art. Enter every trembling heart. But Christians 
have a history of crediting Jesus with all the good ideas of the faith, a history of assessing the God of the Hebrew Bible as the angry, punishing one and elevating Jesus to a certain status, and certainly we do. But supersessionism is the idea that Christianity supersedes, overrules, and overwrites Judaism as superior and right, the be-all, end-all, as we say. Not unlike John Wesley, who was a faithful Anglican and never intended to start a new church, let alone a new denomination, Jesus was a faithful Jewish person. He quotes the Hebrew Bible all throughout his preaching and his teaching, and he never spoke of something called Christianity. Jesus taught us a way, the way, a way of being in the world, a way of love. Even on the cross, his final words from the psalmist and the sign above his head reads, the King of the Jews. So when the lawyer Pharisee asks a testing question about which commandment is the greatest, Jesus knows the answer. With over 600 laws in Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Moses' top 10 list of big commandments come comes a very straight answer from Jesus, a radical prioritizing of our lives if we will let it be. Jesus sums it all up, the law and the prophets, with these two commands. Say them with me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. How'd you do? Now hear this from Deuteronomy 6. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them while you are at home and when you are away and when you lie down and when you rise. And from Deuteronomy 10, so now, O Israel, what does the Lord require of you? Only to respect the Lord, your God, to walk in all his ways, to love and to serve the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul for your own well-being. Walk in this way. Keep these words on your hearts. Recite them for our well-being. <laughs> Earlier this month, the week of October 2nd, our Jewish neighbors celebrated Sukkot the Feast of the Tabernacles, the Festival of Booths. When serving in Highland Park, I worked with the Interfaith Clergy uh, Association, and my favorite rabbi, Rabbi Debbie, taught us about their celebration. After the high holidays, the new year, and their day of atonement, they move out of their homes and into their home-crafted sukkot, where through the slat of the woven roof, the sky can be seen and rain can come down. A celebration of harvest and hospitality, of home and hearth, the gifts and the dwelling place of God. The symbols, some of the symbols of Sukkot are the palm, myrtle and willow branches, symbols of our backbone, eyes and lips. All that can be either or both source of our problems, backbone, eyes, and lips, 
or give praise and love to God. The symbols are shaken all around to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west because that's where God is. Like Advent, when we begin again our Christian story year after year, the ritual of Sukkot in the synagogue comes with an unrolling of the entire scroll and the readings move from the end of Deuteronomy to Genesis, reminding them of the circle of life. And on this Reformation Sunday, in the midst of so much division, a return to our shared roots of blessing all the nations feels appropriate to me. We show love when we worship, but I am preaching to the choir, aren't I? And God is worthy of our worship online, outside, or inside, morning, noon, or middle of the night. But we spend more time on our smartphones than we do in our scriptures, Facebook, Instagram, Solitaire, Sudoku, and Minecraft, and news feeds. We spend more time on our computers in emails and emojis than we do replying to God. We spend more time, not always by choice, in the noise rather than the silence where we cultivate the conditions that are necessary to hear God's voice speak to us. Trusting in political chaos, trusting in the midst of political chaos, as we approach election day, God help us, is not an easy thing. Loving God in the grief and the loneliness of COVID, while our sorrows like sea billows raw, is not an easy thing making time for God, attending to God, thinking about God, meditating on God, praying to God, being in conscious contact with God must be intentional for the living of these days. How will you make time? Loving God will need to be a very conscious endeavor. And so on this first Sunday of our stewardship campaign, church say amen. We are grateful for Morrow Church. We are Morrow. And you know, growing up, my dad wasn't reciting the love of God at the dinner table. But he was speaking about his love for the church, for Jesus, and he was teaching me about tithe. And so with a 10 slice mini loaf of bread in his hands, he would ask me, what does 10% look like? And because I was pretty good in math and science, even an honor student, believe that or not, until trigonometry and calculus, that is. I knew that one slice of that 10 loaf, 10 slice loaf belonged to God, that perhaps it all belonged to God. And as our social justice pioneer from Sparta, Anne Freeman Price would remind me, look at all we get to keep. Nine slices of bread. Daily bread. Teach at your tables and in your school of love, your love for God. God's love for you. Be intentional. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen.
Hello, Morrow people. Fred Perfetta here. This is the start of the 2021 generosity campaign. You all did a great job last year, taking a step up. We made our goal. You should all be proud of yourselves. But that was last year. This is this year. This is a different year. This is the year of the pandemic. People are stressed. Budgets are stressed. And here we are asking you for money. But Morrow is stressed too. We can't worship the way we want to. We can't sing the way we want to. Outdoor worship is a godsend. But we want to be inside our beautiful sanctuary. So attendance is down. And we can't pass the plate. Now we can get all these things back when the crisis is over, when we can be safe again. But we don't want Morrow to atrophy in the meantime. So you're stressed. Morrow is stressed. What can we do? Well, here's what I suggest that we do. Everybody should give something, whatever it is, even if it's less than what you usually give. And for those who can give more than they usually do, do give more. Give as much as you can. This is a crisis. But if we all chip in, we'll get through it. And when the crisis is over, good old Morrow will still be standing strong. Thank you. At Morrow, we began the liturgical year with all our favorite traditions of wreaths and worship, carols and candles, with family and friends. It seemed like in a minute we were moving into Lent, which we began with our favorite pancake breakfast event. But then COVID became a reality here in New Jersey as our communities became some of the most impacted by COVID-19. Mara responded quickly, following state guidelines and stopped our physical gatherings. Immediately, we made a creative Holy Week virtual worship with a powerful celebration of resurrection on Easter Sunday. And then the news became scary again, as events including the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor exposed further the racial injustices in all parts of our lives. Morrow led prayer-filled virtual gatherings with much of the congregation involved as we responded to the joint pandemics of COVID-19 and racial injustice through worship and mutual aid to our neighbors. We reinvented confirmation. and added an outdoor worship service that has become a witness of good news in our community. As we celebrate communion and baptism in new ways, we helped our children stay connected to God's presence through VBS and peace and justice camps, remembering that God is with us in the storms and God always calls us to justice. We recreated outreach ministries with our youth to support seniors here at home. Through it all, we morphed, transformed, changed, and stretched the ways we do life together so that we could be safe, healthy, and always morrow. We. Still giving and growing strong.
Team Gerke would like to express our appreciation to Morrow Church for the continued online worship services so that we can worship with our church family from afar. We also want to give a shout out to the music ministry and Dr. Holland for the hymns and anthems and the other music um, that he adds to every single worship service. Thank you so much. Gracious and most loving and life-giving God, there are so many things that weigh upon us. We feel pressure in our chest and pits in our stomach, and yet we know that you are there, that you are with us. If only we would turn to you reply to you, make time for you. And on this day where we are concerned about our country and weeks away from an election, we ask that you would help us to trust that all is in your hands, that you would help us to believe and live and be prophetic witness to the world and what your love looks like. Love for all people, blessings for all nations. Lord, we ask that you would surround us with a very real sense of where you are leading, how you are leading. Shine the light close to our feet that we might know where to go. Whisper in our ear and tap us on the shoulder. And for those of us who are living alone, many who are grieving the loss of loved ones, wrap us in your warm embrace. And we do, here at Morrow Church, vow to live into being a school of love that tells the story of all your people set free because we make vows to set your people free. And so, bless our stewardship season Bless our moving indoors, if it be your will. And we will vow to pray, pray over each and every gift and each and every move we make. And we'll watch for blessing from you in response to all that we do. And it is in that spirit that we as your children dare pray together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
my friends, go out into the world and remember all you have to keep. Remember to love God with your whole selves and go out into the world and bear witness to that love, to Jesus who came to show us the way and go empowered by all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Know that God is near. Go in the one, in the name of the one, who is creator and redeemer, and the one who will sustain us for all time. Amen.